O'Hagan Watchmakers, and this is um, Jennifer's uh, tiny Swiss watch. What I've done is I've taken off the hands. Here, the dial, the hour wheel, and the uh, back plate. The watch just stopped running, and um, we're going to see what's going on with it here. I'm just going to slowly take this apart. This is a very, very small watch. It's actually going to require... So the first thing I'm going to do is remove the balance... which is right here. The balance complete. This is the balance spring. You can see moving. Should probably first make sure that there is no um, power in the spring. And I'm just going to release the click here. Let the power down on the main spring here. It's not letting me. So that's it. The power on the main spring is released. And now it's just a matter of. I think I was off camera. Well, what I did was I I removed the uh, I moved the click back and while holding the crown and released so there's no tension on the mainspring. So I'm going to remove. Doesn't give me much room to move the. I'm going to remove the balance spring, which is right here. There's a screw, and this is the the balance or the hair spring. That is the hairspring removal. Place that in the petri.
point, um, I am going to remove the crown wheel, the ratchet wheel, the click, and the click spring. Ground wheel is a reverse threaded on this. So you turn it clockwise to loosen it. Removing the uh, mainspring. Removing the ratchet wheel. Click and the click spring. Oh, there's the there's the click spring here. That is uh, similar to a previous watch, but the the click spring is inserted in uh, this little hole here and then seats into a little space in the click itself. That is the click spring and the orientation of the click spring. this gets it or not, let me see. Huh. Don't pick it up at all. Oh, here. I don't know if I can get the orientation or not. Now the click itself We'll remove There's no longer any tension on the click. Click spring has a bevel in it where the screw seats and it has a little leg on the bottom that goes down. And I don't know if that's visible or not. And at this point, I can remove the plate, the, the rear plate. actually the top plate of the watch. This is considered the top plate. And there are three screws and the key here is I gotta make sure I know which screw goes where. Because they might be different size screws. And after this we will be able to see the orientation of the train of wheels.
So these do not appear to be the same screws. They might be. Yes, and all three screws are the same, so I don't have to be too concerned about the uh, the way they go back. So at this point, we can remove this this plate. And I want to do this gently. You'll see the plate start to to come loose. What I want to make sure is that I don't mess with the train wheel so I can properly note their positions. So this is the removal of the, the train wheel and barrel bridge, the train bridge and the barrel bridge. Now, I'm going to make some notes here as to the position of these. I consider the escapement, which is here, to be the first wheel, then the second wheel, the third wheel, and the fourth wheel, or the center wheel. That's probably not proper, but that's how I'm going to look at it. So the center wheel... These simply, the, the center wheel is the highest wheel, and they each step down from there on this particular watch. In other words, the third wheel is below the second wheel, and the second wheel is below the third wheel. And of course, the um, escapement is last. So the center wheel is pinion down, and I may have an issue that I did not remove the cannon pinion. So I'm going to remove the second wheel is pinion up. The third wheel is pinion up. And the center wheel I'm unable to remove, as well as the escapement. So I think what I've done here is I will check and see the other side of the watch and see the, the barrel is, is coming out here. So the uh, mainspring barrel. So let me see if I can remove that. I don't know if you saw that. This is the mainspring barrel, which powers the watch. And uh, I didn't really follow proper procedure in that I should have removed the cannon, the cannon pinion first. The cannon pinion is this item here and it's friction fitted. And when I do that, the center wheel is gonna fall out. So just grab it with my pliers and it should click out of there. And there it is. There's the cannon pinion. And if I turn this back over, I should be able to remove the center wheel. This movement holder is, is nice, it's just this movement is so small.
So here we have, you really can't see it, the darn sun is shadow. The center wheel and the escapement. Center rail should come out at this point. And that is pinion down. Pinion down on the center wheel. Now the escapement, I'm going to have to remove the balance bridge which is here, I'm sorry, the pallet fork bridge. Which should release the, should at least expose the pallets. The pallets and the escapement, here are the pallets. We'll remove those. These are jeweled. I don't know if you can see the jewels on the end. Pallets. And then the escapement. Interesting. Kind of is a little difficult to get out of there. It might be that it. Is out by the side. You can see. That the escapement. Is installed and removed from the side into its uh, jewel. So now the escapement is out. The escapement is that which controls the power of release of the watch at about probably five beats per second, along with the pallets. And that is it for this. In order to remove the keyless works and such, um, I'm not going to do that until it's very tiny here, of course, because it's called a tiny watch, so Set off camera.